Ever wonder how successful paving contractors and jurisdictions take mat density readings quickly, safely, and easily? Without all the safety concerns, hassle, and cost factors associated with nuclear gauges? The Pavement Quality Indicator from TransTech. Anyone who has used a nuclear gauge for density measurements knows its radioactive source and problems associated with that concept. Safety concerns, need for certified operators, and their extensive training, and their badges, and badge service fees, and licensing fees, and regulatory controls, including transport regulations. Plus, special storage needs, resale and disposal hassles, accident worries, security and terrorism concerns. Not to mention the day-to-day, job-to-job, reading-to-reading pains like complicated calibration, standard count waiting, the endless waiting and interpolation of results, no passenger car, cabin transport, heavy lugging on site and from site to site. The nuclear gauge is especially costly on super pave and other perpetual pavement jobs where compaction time is of the essence. Let's take a look at the TransTech Pavement Quality Indicator, better known as the PQI, and make some point-by-point -point comparisons of important features. First, let's consider the source. The PQI uses an electromagnetic field to measure density of asphalt compared to the cesium-137 and americium-241 beryllium sources of the nuclear gauge. The harmless PQI source can be switched off after each test, while the cesium-137 source cannot be switched off and runs for 65 years. The AM-241 source runs for 456 years. We won't wait around for that one to shut down. Thus, the lead encasement of the nuke for safety. The nuke, with the case, weighs in at 85 pounds, while the PQI weighs only 30 pounds, which probably accounts for the nuclear gauge operators having one arm longer than the other. Anyone in the crew can be trained to operate the PQI in a couple of hours. The nuke, on the other hand, requires extensive, expensive training for certification. Badges and badge monitoring service fees on top of that. The PQI requires no licensing whatsoever, no badges, no badge service fees, and you can carry it in the back seat of your vehicle, where it remains dry and secure. Enough of this chalk talk. Let's go out on the job site and we'll show you some typical tests. Note how easy it is to carry and set up the PQI. And once out of the case, it weighs less than a bowling ball. On most jobs, the PQI is calibrated against actual core samples and repeatability of tests is superb. See how quick it is to run these tests? Only three seconds per test. This testing speed keeps the tester from delaying the roller operator and is mandatory on super paved projects where beating the tender zone could make or break a job, if not a contractor. With a fast rolling team and a PQI, we're talking bonus. But what about accuracy? You may have heard through the grapevine that PQI is not accurate. We'd guess the source of that rumor is the guy selling the nuclear gauge. Check this out. The National Center for Asphalt Technology, NCAT, ran a series of tests comparing both the PQI and the nuke against 233 actual core samples on 78 different road sections of their test track. At the end of the tests, they concluded that the difference between the corrected measured density and the actual density is similar for the two gauges, suggesting each can measure close to the same density. Okay, we've shown you how safe it is, how light it is, how easy it is to operate, and have confirmed its accuracy in a series of independent tests. So it must cost more, right? While the initial ownership costs are about the same, costs like licensing fees and annual regulatory fees, which don't exist for the PQI, are not. After you total these fees, plus calibration, repair, TLD monitoring, and safety training, you'll find that the PQI costs substantially less than the nuclear gauge. And these costs don't include disposal costs once you decide to trash the nuke. That's a pretty solid rundown on PQI's features and benefits. There's more that you'll discover once you have it out on your site. In the meantime, TransTech's engineers asked us to show you how quick it is to get the PQI up and running. Since your arm may be tired of lugging that nuke around, our animator will push the buttons for you. Before we get started, 
make sure the battery's fully charged. When it is, you can run about a 12-hour shift before recharging. If not, the readout will tell you so. Let's go to work. Turn the power switch on and wait for the PQI to boot up. Takes a few seconds. The first screen will prompt you to select the predominant aggregate size or type of course being paved. 1. 25 to 35 millimeter or base. 2. 16 to 24 millimeter or intermediate. 3. 9 to 15 millimeter or top coat. Enter one of these. The PQI will then prompt you to select lift thickness units in 1. inches or 2. millimeters. Then enter the actual laydown thickness and press enter. This will bring you to the startup menu. If you're starting a new job, you'll want to press 1 and go through the simple setup procedure. If you are continuing a job, even from yesterday, simply press run. Next, we have to enter the maximum theoretical density, or MTD, which will be provided by the mix designer. Back at the main menu, press 2 in order to get to the MTD. Then pressing 1 allows the user either to 1, accept an MTD value previously entered, or 2, enter a new value. If entering a new MTD value, the next screen will prompt you to set the MTD. Use the keypad to enter the new MTD value. Calibrating the PQI to the actual core sample is easy. Let's go back on site and run through the following procedure. Select a dry area on the compacted mat. With a crayon, draw a circle around the base of the PQI. Press Enter and record the density reading. Move the PQI to a spot centered on the outside perimeter of the drawn circle. Draw another circle at this new location. Press Enter and record the new reading. Continue moving the PQI around the perimeter of the original circle, drawing new circles and recording readings until five different readings are taken. Total the five readings and divide by five. That will give you an average reading for this cluster. Take a core sample from the center of the inner circle. Move this operation a few feet longitudinally away from the above cluster and repeat the same group of tests and take a core sample. If the job situation and inspector allow, take as many cluster readings as you can realistically take. Continue to average the readings to compare with the core samples. Average out the individual averages to obtain an offset value. Compare the average PQI reading against the core sample and determine the difference or offset value. Enter this offset value into the PQI as follows. From one of the operating modes, press the Cal key. From the calibration menu, press 1 to access the offset screen. Press 1 again if the PQI average is higher than the core density, or press 2 if the PQI average is lower than the core density. Enter the average offset adjustment value. This input will be confirmed on the next screen. Follow the screen prompts and you are now ready to do some serious testing. Many paving contractors have a pretty good idea of what kind of compaction they obtain from their screeds. To start up a job with a quick offset adjustment of the PQI, enter the maximum theoretical density and take five quick density readings across the back of the screed. Make sure you take the readings on the uncompacted area of the mat. Average out the readings, compare them with your known screed density values and perform the offset procedures outlined in the core tests. You'll still have to compare post-compaction readings to cores later on, but this is a quick and easy way to get in the ballpark when starting up a job. So far, this video has run 8 minutes and 17 seconds. Think back of all the tests we ran. If this were a video from the nuclear gauge, we'd just be getting started. Well, that's it. That's how easy it is to use Transtex Pavement Quality Indicator.